Well, you know what? Yesterday was July 4th, one of our favorite holidays, but today feels like Christmas, another one of our favorite holidays, because we have a container. There you go. Our partners over in the UK, as you know, we have new partners both in the UK and in Japan, and they basically every month will alternate and send us different stuff. So in here, we've got about 30 bikes from our UK partners. Let's see what we got. I just filmed a, an introduction for an Instagram video up here. You can see the guys are hard at work over there inside the container. But I gotta say, days like this are some of the best days here at Iconic. I'm up here, I can see the airport. I can look into the hangar and we've got multiple NR750s and RC213V. I mean, based on the fact that we have the shipping container set up inside to create the second story, we're used to being on top of containers here but uh, it's gonna be a good day. So enough about what's inside the hangar. Let's focus on what's cool inside here. Let's check it out. Well, here's our first bike. It's a Ducati 851 SP2, one of the special homologation ones. This one's number 303, 32,000 miles on it. So we'll go through it, make sure it runs, everything's all right. It's gonna need a little bit of cleanup on it, but uh, I gotta say, it's always nice when the first thing that comes out is a special homologation bike. Let's get this thing out of here. Okay, just a quick check-in. The guys are about halfway done unloading the container. And as you can see, we've, <laughs> we've got plenty that's already out. Uh, I'm gonna wait till the end of the video to kind of pick a few of my favorites, but I can definitely tell you in advance that two of them are gonna be this Africa Twin that's right here and this Benelli 254 Quattro. So look forward to that. I just wanted to check in so you can take a quick look. Daniel will show you, Daniel's behind the camera right now. Daniel will show you a little bit of B-roll of some of the stuff we've unloaded so far and then we'll check in again once everything is empty. It's pretty fantastic. You got the matching purple wheels. This one's got aero pipes, 27,000 kilometers. This will be an interesting one for sure. Look at that. done. All 38 bikes are unloaded. It took our team about three and a half hours to, to do that. Kudos to them. I mean, it's not a cold day here. Mark's all excited there in the background. Nice job, buddy. Uh, looks like uh, everything, I mean, everything's down efficiently and kudos to our partners in the UK who packed the container because at first glance, at least, I don't see any damage uh, that happened during transportation, which is exciting to see. Uh, everyone's earned a good lunch break. <laughs> we'll get out of the sun for a little bit. And then I'll take a few minutes just to point out some of my favorites, some cool stuff in here. Obviously everything is gonna go up for sale on the auction site, but uh, while I got your attention, I'm gonna show you a couple of my personal highlights from today's container. chance to look at all the bikes and there's a really cool variety of things here. Uh, I just wanted to pick out a few of my highlights for you guys to enjoy. Hopefully I can show you something new or different to you. Uh, and I'll start with one of the weird, <laughs> one of the really weird ones. This is a Benelli 254 Quattro and the 254 represents a 250cc motor, four cylinder, uh, obviously inline layout. 
Now, this bike goes back to the 70s. Uh, back then, a gentleman named uh, De Tomaso, who was also the same person responsible for creating the De Tomaso Pantera muscle car, uh, he bought Motor Guzzi and Benelli from the Italian government because both companies had gone bankrupt. And so he wanted to, you know, wealthy Italian businessman wanted to bring these names back into the limelight. And so he invested a bunch of money to create new models. One of them was around a 250cc platform and he kind of did a little bit of GM badge engineering, meaning Benelli had one version of the bike, same frame, same motor, that kind of thing. It was supposed to be the sport version. Moto Guzzi had a version that was more of a touring version. Uh, so this is the Benelli, this is the sport bike. And uh, one of the, there's a couple things I really want to point out about it. First is if you imagine yourself sitting on the bike and looking at the dash, you don't see a dash. There's just a big Benelli logo, I guess, to remind you what company you're, you gave your money to. Instead, the dash is here on the top of the tank. It looks pretty similar to what you would find on something like a Benelli 900 Say, the, the inline six motor. Uh, you've got a Veglia gauges, tack odometer. This thing says just 1934 kilometers on it. But uh, <laughs> where it really gets weird is underneath here. So again, if you look at the dash, you, there's no master cylinder reservoir or anything. The, the designer was actually a gentleman named Lino Tonti. Tonti was, is famous for, among other things, coming up with that Tonti frame that they use in Moto Guzzi's, uh, like the V7 Sport. So he came up with this design and he wanted this part to be as clear as possible. So if I take a little peek under here, you'll see you've got the gas tank and the master cylinder reservoir is here inside <laughs> inside this area. Now to make all this fit, the gauges, the master cylinder, that kind of thing, they had to reduce the size of the gas tank. It only fits 2.2 gallons. Uh, and so even though it's a 250, I mean, realistically, you're looking for gas every 75, 80 miles, uh, which did not help sales. But it's a rare bike, even in Europe. Uh, so it's kind of cool to have this here. We'll, uh, you know, we'll fix it up, make it a runner, and then put it on the auction site. But it's just a total oddball, uh, which I'm kind of a big fan of. On the flip side of the performance scale, we've got this thing right next to it. If you look at it from the front, it sure looks like a Yamaha R7, but it is aftermarket bodywork, and all you really need to know can be summarized right here, turbocharged R1. The turbo itself, it's gonna be hard to see from where you're at, but we'll show you some B-roll. It's basically there uh, behind the headers. And uh, we'll, this bike might already be pre-sold, uh, we'll see. But, uh, and we'll do a future video once, you know, the battery's dead right now, but once we have a chance to go through it, we'll do a future video showing it off a little bit, getting really into the details. But as you just look at the components on this, Olin suspension, shocks, or sorry, shock singular, forks, steering stabilizer, you've got AP, six piston calipers up front, narrow band rotors, looking at a floater, <laughs> floating rotor in the back with a Brembo caliper, Akaprovich exhaust. I mean, this thing is really, really cool and it's probably gonna satisfy even the craziest speed demons out there. Let's see what else we got. Uh, over here, got a couple of cool, set or three cool 750s, I should say. Jake's your Tiger Stripe. This is a livery that I don't believe we ever got in the US. That's pretty cool, but there's a different Jigsaw I wanna show, uh, show off in just a moment. Two Kawasaki ZX7s here. One is the base model. This is an L model, uh, 1994. I really love these purple and pink <laughs> 90s liveries. Uh, that we have. So in 1994, that was the generation that uh, Kawasaki took the race motor out of the K homologation bike, stuffed it in here, about 119 horsepower. It did not have the close ratio uh, gearbox. It did not have the flat slides from the K, but still, it's, I mean, that's good power. It was the first generation that they did the Ram air intake, just one side up front. This one's got an aero pipe, so it's probably making a little bit more horsepower than that. But really why I think this cool has nothing to do with 119 horsepower, just Look at it, it's so gorgeous. It's so cool to find one in this livery. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. And I'll show you a, a, like a matching uh, Jigsaw version of that in just a moment. So that's cool to me from a livery standpoint. This is also cool to me from a livery standpoint, but there's some performance behind this because this is the R model, the homologation uh, you know, for, for super bike racing spec. So this has the extra hole in the fairing to adjust the flat slide carbs. This has the close ratio gearbox. This is all the good performance stuff that you wanted in the ZXRs of the day. And I say ZXR because this is a European bike. So unlike here in America where they call them the ZX7, over there it was ZXR and then 750R uh, because it was the homologation bike. Again, paint job that you did not get in the US, a little bit Christmassy, green, white, and red. Let's go check out that Jigsaw I was talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna wheel this back. So you can see there's still a, a few more things here. 
but look at this. So in a way, this is kind of the, the twin to that uh, Cowie we were just showing off. I think one thing Kawasaki did better is they did have color matched wheels. So on that bike, the wheels are purple as opposed to black, but this is a really popular livery. We have so many customers looking or asking for this specific paint job uh, on their Jigsters with the black, black base. And again, purple, pink, yellow, blue, all kinds of 90s accents. Uh, so this is, I'm pretty excited about this one. Right next to it, we talked earlier, we started this portion of the video with an old Benelli. Well, here's a new Benelli, or relatively new, I should say. One of the last ones they made before they went bankrupt again, and then were bought by a Chinese company. But this has the green and white or green and silver paint job that they also used in the limited editions. Uh, but this is the Tornado Tray. They made it in a 900cc version and an 1130cc version. One of the coolest things about this bike is actually in the back right here. You'll see that uh, the radiator is actually uh, under the seat. Uh, they do that to help shorten the wheelbase because you don't need to have the radiator in front. Uh, and then that lets you get kind of narrow the distance between the front wheel and the engine. So anyway, the radiator's under the seat, and on this bike, it's got uh, yellow fans, which are just such a striking visual when, when you're behind the bike. So that's a pretty cool one. We've sold a few of these, both the limited versions and the regular base models, and uh, looking forward to maybe get a test ride on this bike, because it's also got one of the, uh, the titanium Benelli Sport exhausts. There's so much cool stuff in this container that I'm barely just glossing over. I mean, we've got a Kawasaki H2750, the Widowmaker, uh, right in front of me, an FCR 750, the OW01. They made these with flush headlights and with sunken in headlights. Just up to you. You can let me know in the comments which one you prefer, but I'm sort of a fan of the sunken headlights that you see here. Olin suspension, all kinds of goodies on that. Just 500 made, even more rare than the RC30s that we love so much here. Uh, another Benelli Tornado tray with the, uh, the radiator fans in the back. Over here, ZX7 RR homologation bike, Akropovich exhaust. This is gonna be a really cool one. Double Ram air intake. And of course, the trademark purple wheels, front and rear to match that purple tail. Uh, ZXR 400, you might, uh, depending on the condition of that, I might end up doing a little side-by-side -side video with that and the new Kawasaki ZX4 RR. It's kind of the spiritual, spiritual successor uh, of that bike, but we'll see how that goes. And a few other cool ones. Jigs are here in this livery, CBR 900 RR. Yamaha YSR50, which matches that 400 that I was just talking about a few moments ago. I haven't even mentioned, there's a CB1100R right here. <laughs> there, again, like I said, there's a lot of cool stuff in this container. An NC24 over there, custom one-off paint to look like Cito, uh, Cito Ponzi's uh, 250 championship racer back when it was sponsored by Campsa at the time. They were the dominant petrol company, kind of like how Repsol sponsors Honda now. But I want to just leave this with two two last bikes. Uh, here we've got a Ducati 851 SP2. Over that 851, 888 run, Ducati created seven different SP or sport production variants, all typically made for homologation purposes so they could go racing. So this was the SP2. Uh, I think Ian Falloon says something like 380 were made. Generally estimates say between 350 and 500. This one is number 303. And some of the things that make them special, so it took the 851 motor, bored it out, and it's what created the 888 motor, which obviously became the next production bike. Uh, it's got the cams from the 851 Superbike. It's got a, a close ratio gearbox, other drivetrain goodies. Suspension-wise, you have Olin's uh, front and rear. This one's got Termi pipes, aluminum subframe, solo seat. This was the performance Ducati of its day. And uh, especially for someone like myself who's partial to the RC30, it's always fun to see the competition and, and just kind of feel what it's like 30 years later. Uh, so that's something we'll definitely get to look forward to when this bike's all ready to go. Lastly, I mentioned, I started this whole description by saying that there was a bit of variety in this container. A lot of us that have been walking around today, this is our favorite bike here. The Africa Twin, the RD03 generation with the 650cc V-Twin. I think most people know the later generation or obviously even the new one with the 1000, but back in the day, uh, most people knew the 750. This was a lot of people consider the more pure uh, off-roady version. Uh, basically, Honda built this in response. BMW went, created the R800, or sorry, the R80, the R100, started winning Prairie Dakar, and Honda said, well, this is how we're gonna put a stop to that. They built this bike, 
aesthetically really reminds you of the race bike that Honda used. This livery is classic, people love this. It's got the, the Japanese English kind of translation of adventure sports. So this one's gonna be a fun one. We're gonna be really excited to take this for a test ride. 65,000 kilometers on it. Uh, but like I said, it's a V-twin motor and it really was the start of even now what Honda's making in terms of the Africa Twins. So I hope you got to learn something new or see something different. Obviously all the bikes have been sitting in container for some time, so the batteries are dead and we might have to go through carbs, that kind of thing. But we'll get everything running. Uh, if there's something that you really are interested in that you might want to try to make an offer before it goes up your auction site, no problem. You can email me, abhi, A-B-H-I, at iconicmotorbikes.com. That's plural, iconicmotorbikes.com. Uh, otherwise, feel free to keep watching us on social media, on YouTube, Instagram. We'll put up videos of us working on these bikes, riding them, explaining why we love them so much. And uh, we'll see you around in the next one.